Welcome back, everybody, to another Last Raps Baseball presentation. Uh, today, a little bit different. We're not going to do a box break today, but rather we're going to look at Japanese baseball cards and Japanese baseball players and Americans who went over or North Americans who went over to play in Japan. So today, uh, we'll kick it off a little bit. Here's our little Hanshin Tiger uh, keychain uh, to get the spirit going. But today, we're going to talk about uh, uh, some of the current players and some of the former players uh, that have come out of Japan. Uh, the first one up is uh, the new center fielder for the Cincinnati Reds. And the first one up is... Outfielder, this is Shogo Akiyama. Shogo Akiyama is a 31 year old outfielder who played with the Cebu Lions uh, for a number of years. He was the third pick in the 2010 NPB draft. In 2015, he set a uh, NPB record for most hits in a season with 216. And uh, in his last five years before signing with Cincinnati this year, he has a career 321 batting average. So a uh, three-year deal, $21 million with Cincinnati. He's projected to be their new center fielder. And if you look at the back of the card, in some areas they have a mix of English and, and uh, of course, Japanese. And you can see uh, this is a 2019 uh, card uh, produced by BBM, which is Baseball Magazine. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, led the league in hitting in 2017 with a 322 average. And you can see where he led the league in with, uh, with most hits. Uh, not a ton of power, you know, 24, 25 home runs in his uh, best years, but uh, pretty much a top of the order hitter. And uh, Cincinnati is going to be uh, lucky to have him in their, their order uh, as they're going to probably try to make some sort of serious run this year. Shogo Akiyama. So for those of you who are interested, um, the, uh, the baseball cards in Japan, uh, they're produced uh, by in a couple of different ways. The one manufacturer is BBM, which is uh, what the Akiyama card was on. BBM produces generally two series, mainstream series sets, and then they do a bunch of team sets um, for the teams where they produce different things. Another company who's been producing the last couple of years has been Epic. Epic, uh, you might be familiar with, with board games and, and those type of things. Well, Epic has been producing baseball cards. And then uh, for those of you who like your potato chips and your salty snacks, Calbee uh, has been producing baseball cards. So when you buy a bag of potato chips, they would have a package of cards. Normally during the season, they come with two cards on the, on the back of the packs uh, later in the year. Um, or after the season, they've been producing special Samurai Japan cards for the national team. Okay, our next, uh, our next card up is a player that some of you may know and some of you may not be familiar with, Carter Stewart. This is his rookie card. He, he was with the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks. Carter Stewart's a Florida native, and uh, in 2018, he was considered to be one of the top prospects in the Major League uh, Baseball draft. Stewart uh, was the eighth overall pick by the Atlanta Braves. Well, the Braves cited a wrist injury and said that uh, they weren't going to give him the amount of money uh, that he should be offered uh, in the slot position where he was drafted. So they kind of lowballed him and uh, offered him money well below slot. So Scott Boris was his agent, and he advised him, said, look, we're not going to sign with the Braves. You go to school, and we'll figure something out. So he went to Eastern Florida State uh, College, a junior college. He was 2-2 two and two with a 1.70 ERA and 13 starts. And he struck, over, uh, struck out over 100 batters in less than 90 innings pitched. So... Uh, what ended up happening was is Boris ended up negotiating a deal with the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks and the deal ended up being worth $7 million guaranteed over six years. I think he can make up to, to more money than that but that's kind of where he's at. So last year Stewart pitched in uh, pretty much what their uh, equivalent would be of uh, rookie ball in Japan and I heard in an interview with him, uh, he was expressing how it's different to face Japanese hitters than it is to face American hitters. Because in Japan, uh, a lot of the hitters with two strikes are just trying to slap the ball, get it in play, where 
Uh, you know, you can climb the ladder on the North American hitters and try to blow the heat by them. So he says it's a lot harder to strike guys out in Japan than it is in North America just because of the style and the approach uh, that they are uh, currently playing. So next up, next up we're going to go a little old school, a little old school, but we're going to stay with the Fukuoka Soft Bangkoks. This is kind of a neat card, but this is one of the potato chip cards, potato chip cards being Kalbi. And at that time, we have uh, Munanori Kawasaki. Munanori Kawasaki played 10 years with the Fukuoka Soft Bank Hawks. He was a middle infielder, primarily a shortstop. And then uh, came, to the, uh, came to North America in 2012. He signed with the Mariners. Then he spent parts of three seasons with the Blue Jays in 2013, 14, and 15. And then in 2016, he went to the, uh, to the Cubs before returning to Japan to play for Fukuoka. And so uh, the qualities of, of Munanari, he was a light-hitting infielder, didn't hit the ball a ton. But Munanori, he, um, he was really infectious with his teammates, very popular player amongst his teammates. Uh, they really enjoyed his, uh, his, uh, his personality. So the back of the card, kind of neat. They got a picture. Uh, unfortunately, it's the same picture that's on the front. Uh, they give his number, they give the specs in, in, in Japanese. I kind of like this little piece here where they show you what position he plays on a little diamond. Uh, and then, of course, he's got some statistics underneath and it tells you a little bit more about it. But again, the mix of English and uh, mix of uh, Japanese on the card to attract people to the, to the card. So that's Munanori Kawasaki, a 2004, uh, um, you know, best nine card. All right. Next up, the Boomer Wells before Boomer Wells. Who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Greg Boomer Wells. And Greg Boomer Wells was a uh, former uh, pro football prospect. And when you look at Boomer here, you can see based on the size of, of Boomer's arms and, and everything else, uh, and he looked like he probably played tight end for uh, a lot of franchises in the NFL. Standing at 6'5", 220, uh, he was originally signed by the Indians, spent time in the Jays and Twins organizations, and then wound up with the Hank Hugh Braves in 1983. In 1988, he was suggested he hit the longest home run in Japanese or NPB uh, and upon base, professional baseball history at 531 feet at Nishin, uh, Nishinomoya Stadium uh, onto an apartment building. Uh, he eventually retired in 1990, was a career 317 hitter, uh, and had 277 homers and, and just over uh, 900 RBIs in the NPB. Um, there's the back of the card. Uh, this one here, it gives you information in Japanese. If you got a Google Translate um, app on your phone, you can always snap a picture of it and read a little bit about Greg Boomer Wells. And uh, there's Boomer for you. Put him back over here. The next guy, the next guy we've got is former Montreal Expo, former Montreal Expo, Warren Cromarty. And Warren Cromarty uh, came up with uh, Andre Dawson, came up with uh, Ellis Valentine, and was a, a big, uh, big member of the Montreal Expos um, for about a, a almost a ten year period. Uh, 1974 to 1983, there's the crow there. Left-handed hitting, uh, um, uh, outfielder, eventually went on to play some first base. Signed with the Murray Giants, played there from 1984 to 1989, and he, he was looking at retiring in 89, um, and then uh, ended up coming back to the major leagues for a swan song with the Kansas City Royals. Played uh, one year as a left-handed stick off the bench, hit a homer, knocked in 20 runs, but then retired with about 20 games left in the season. Uh, off the field, which is always kind of neat. I like the off the field stories about some of these guys. Uh, uh, the Crow was a accomplished drummer, and in fact, he uh, often would jam with Canadian rock band Rush. And uh, as he played with Canadian rock band Rush, uh, he also was uh, um, on their 1982 album, Signals. Um, on the back, it has Warren Cromarty Secondary School, and he's also thanked in their uh, inside notes. But the Crow, uh, you know, obviously uh, with uh, Andre Doss and Ellis Valentine, uh, kind of became expendable um, for the Expos when they had Tim Raines come along there in the late 80s. And um, 
yeah, uh, ended up taking his trade over to Japan and ended up having a number of great years uh, playing in the Japanese league. The next guy up that I have is Kosi Yoshida. Kosi Yoshida is a 19-year-old. He was a rookie this year. I don't know if it's uh, how this is going to show up. This is a, actually a, uh, a parallel card numbered 1 to 100. He was the first overall pick in the 2019 first-year player draft and um, made his pro debut at 18 years old this year with the Nippon Ham Fighters. And um, the Nippon Ham Fighters, he was 1-3 in three with a 12.27 ERA in four appearances. He had 13 strikeouts in 11 innings. But keep in mind, he's 18 years old, fresh out of high school, one year removed from high school, playing against men who've been in this game for you know, sometimes upwards of 10, 15, 20 years at the top level of the game. Well, Yoshida, and you can see here on the back of the card, it's specially numbered out of uh, out of 100. Give you a rookie story and a did you know. So if you if you can read the Japanese on the back, uh, again, BBM, first version card. Yoshida was interesting. High school baseball is, is a very popular uh, tournament that they do every year in Japan. And uh, Yoshida... Threw 881 pitches in two weeks in the 2018 tournament. Uh, he threw 50 innings in the two weeks in six outings. And for a lot of people by North American standards, uh, Yoshida, he was uh, on August the 17th in 2018, he threw a complete game, 164 pitch uh, game, and then he followed it back up on August the 18th with another 140 uh, pitches. To me, that's absolutely incredible. Uh, he stands 5'8 and 185 pounds. I don't know how long this guy's career will end up. Uh, certainly, um, uh, diminutive right-handers uh, don't necessarily uh, have lengthy careers uh, unless their last name is uh, Martinez and first name is Pedro. Um, but certainly uh, a player to keep an eye out for and, and see how he progresses through his career. Next up, I got a, a little bit of a throwback, uh, another Calby card, but this is going back to the 1970s, and this is Davy Johnson. Davy Johnson uh, spent a lot of time uh, in, in professional baseball, well over uh, you know uh, 40 years in the game, and Davy Johnson as a player and as a manager, well, two-time World Series winner, twice as a player, uh, once as a manager, leading the 1986 New York Mets to a World Series championship. Uh, Davy Johnson, um, you know, uh, went over to Japan uh, in 1975, uh, hit below 200, didn't have a great year. I think he had a two-year contract with him, but he followed it up in, in 76 with 26 homers and, and batted 275. It was a four-time MLB All-Star selection and, and, of course, going over there in the twilight of his career to, to extend his time and, and, uh, and continue playing, and you sometimes see that with guys. There's the back of the card. And uh, as you can see, uh, number 348, uh, Yamuri Giants. And, uh, you know, some more information about uh, Davey on the back of the card. And, all right, we'll just leave him over there. Our next guy up, it's, well, it's not a Japanese card yet, uh, but our next guy up is a former uh, Houston Astro prospect, Carl Tuffy Rhodes. And Carl Tuffy Rhodes is uh, an interesting character. He played 14 years in Japan. And uh, where's Tuffy here? Let's bring him into the picture. There's Tuffy with uh, the Houston Astros. Carl uh, Tuffy Rhodes uh, ended up uh, in Japan after um, after playing briefly with the Expo or with the Expos with the Houston Astros. Um, never really carved his niche in in, in pro ball in uh, in the United States. But Japan, a living legend. And uh, not only was he a living legend in Japan, played 14 years with the Kintetsu uh, Osaka Buffaloes, Yamuri Giants, and the, uh, the Oryx uh, Buffaloes. Um, he hit 55 home runs one year to tie the legendary Sadahara O's record of 55 back in 1964. But a lot of controversy ensued with Carl Tuffy Rhodes, and there's Rhodes here in his Buffalo days. Uh, on a Calby potato chip card. Uh, there was approximately five, six games left in the season, and the Japanese pitchers refused to pitch to him, refused to pitch to him, didn't want him to break O's record. And uh, they just basically intentionally walked him for the rest of the year. 
And so there was a lot of contr uh, controversy that surrounded that. And people were upset that, you know, it was tarnishing the record. Uh, subsequent years, um, Alex Cabrera uh, went on to, uh, to, to face a similar feat uh, where he had uh, tied the record and, and then teams refused to pitch to him with the last five games left. Um, except um, it was, uh, I believe, uh, Sadaharo was managing the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks, and uh, he ordered his pitchers to pitch to Cabrera and to throw strikes. But Cabrera never did break the record. Uh, the new record is uh, 60, and that's held by Vel uh, Vladimir Ballantin, former, um, uh, former Seattle Mariner who's gone over uh, and has had a phenomenal career in, um, in Japan. And, uh, of course, Carl Tuffy Rhodes. Um, yeah, having a, having a great career for, uh, for an American uh, player who couldn't really find his niche here in North America. i got two more to go. Uh, my next guy up is uh, somebody that uh, that everybody will know, and I just really don't know where to start with this guy. But it's a cool card from his days with the Oryx uh, Blue Wave, and that, of course, is Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro Suzuki, uh, he played 28 years, 28 seasons at the top level of professional baseball. To me, that's unbelievable. Had 1,278 hits in the NPB before coming to the United States. And then 3,089 hits in the MLB. So that's over 4,300 career hits. Um, but, you know, we could talk about a lot of different stories about Ichiro, about things that he did over here. But I think the thing that I find most unique is when he was seven years old, he went to his father and said, you know, I, I want to become the best player that I ever could, uh, that I can, can be. And so his dad set up a routine at home. Every day he would come home he would throw 50 pitches. Then he would take 50 ground balls. Then he would take 50 outfield fly balls. And then 500 swings a day, 250 off a machine and 250 off of his father every single day. Think about how much work that is that he puts in. I, I, I can't even fathom a seven-year-old coming home and saying, this is what I want to do. And of course, you know, today, one of the greats of the game and um, you know Ichiro Suzuki. What can we what can we say um, uh, that hasn't been said? Well, we're gonna finish it off with one last one, and and the last one today is the Japanese legend himself, and that is I've got a Calbi card from the 1970s, and in the famous flamingo batting stance is Sadahara O. Oh. Sadahara O, oh, left-handed batter, left-handed thrower. Uh, 868 career home runs, um, absolutely unbelievable. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned to you before, uh, you know, Randy Bass actually in 1985 went through the same thing that Tuffy Rhodes went through where they wouldn't pitch to him, where he had a chance to break the record and the, and the teams just weren't, weren't, uh, weren't throwing to him, didn't want to pitch to him, wanted to avoid him. And, uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing stuff. So anyways, uh, Sadahara O, uh, same type of deal. When he was in the high school tournament, that, uh, the, when he had to go play in the, the Koshi, Koshian Stadium, he became a Japanese legend in high school. He pitched in high school, and um, he had a problem. He had some blisters on his fingers. He went out, and he won the first game that he pitched, and then um, went out and pitched again in pain. There was blood all over the place, and him and the catcher refused to, to, to say what was going on, that he was pitching, playing hurt. Ended up getting infected. Uh, then he had to pitch back-to-back -back games. Same thing. Pitched uh, uh, two days consecutive. Started and complete game finished. Um, and um, after that, um, he uh, his father had come from Tokyo where he had grown up. And um, anyways, brought this this uh, this herbal medicine and, and, and gave it, put, applied it to his fingers to fight the infection of fight so he could throw through the pain. And uh, anyways, ended up leading his high school to the, uh, to the national championship. So, uh, you know, these type of stories, obviously, legends are born in the high schools. And, and then, of course, they, they go on to their professional careers. But Sadahara O, oh, uh, one of the Japanese greats of all time. And, of course, this here on the back of the card, you can see uh, uh, more information uh, about it. If you, if you speak Japanese, of course, uh, uh, this will... Uh, give you some of that information about what uh what's been said there 
Well, listen, I want to thank you again for, for tuning in. And again, this time a little bit different uh, take. We've got our Japanese baseball cards. If you like the video and like uh, what we've done, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a like. Uh, and, and feel free to drop some comments in the comment section because we'd love to hear you. If you want to see another Japanese baseball card um, uh, 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 recap, or if you'd like to see a Japanese baseball card break, let us know because uh, there's a lot of people out here that, uh, that are into to baseball and it's not just in North America. Uh, the Japanese can play the game and they do it pretty well. And uh, there's a lot of influence from North America in that sport over there. So thanks again for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next time from Last Raps Baseball.